Jose Kessene. The eyes of it. Our journey has been steady from the advent with crystal clear vision. We started off as a news online portal. We subsequently evolved into a magazine. And now, on, on your, your radio, radio, we do not only bear the name Media House. We practice with the best ethos of our professional calling, presenting facts with objectivity. We are committed and resolute. We are Harlow Maze. Harlow Maze. We are we the standard, are the standard bearers. bearers. It's Harlow Maze on radio. Dedicated to promotion of legislature, democracy, and good governance. It's hot, interactive, educating, engaging, and entertaining. Hello Maison Radio, Thursdays, 10 a.m. on Armed Forces Radio, 107.7 FM. Hello Maison Radio, Parliament, brought to the people, brought to the people. Yes, we are back again on your radio. I'm Forces Radio 107.7 FM Abuja. And top of the hour, every Thursday is a time for the program Hello Maze on Radio. So welcome to Hello Maze on Radio. My name is Daniel Odi. Welcome you to the program. It is a political talk show. We highlight issues in the front burner. We discuss burning issues of national interest. So the program is aimed at deepening democratic values and to promote good governance for the interests of the general in the interest of the general public. My name is Daniel Oti. I won't be talking alone because uh, we have a burning issue which we need to dissect, clarify, and probably provide answers to what the public needs to know. And that issue I'll be unveiling very, very soon. I won't be talking alone, just like I've mentioned. We have a guest in the studio to help me do all of the questioning and answer. But before that, I'll introduce the topic of discussion. Budget padding and matters arising from that incident. Like we all know, it is no longer news that the Senate on Tuesday suspended a senator representing Bochi Central Senatorial District. Abdul Nengi is his name. So for three months, he was suspended for three months for alleging that the 2024 budget was padded with about three trillion naira, not three million. Now we're talking about trillion, three trillion naira. So the upper chamber also resolved that if Mr. Nengi could send an apology letter, the leadership of the Senate would thereafter decide whether to lift the suspension or not. The Senate President Godswi Akpabio announced the suspension of Mr. Ningi after it was supported by a majority of senators during deliberation at the Committee of the Whole. So, however, a section of the public of the view that the suspension of the senator was executed without cause to the subject matter, which is the issue of budget padding. And that should form the basis of our discussion this morning. To discuss with me and uh, to be part of the program live in the studio is a former senator in the person of Senator Sheh Usani. Good morning, sir, and welcome once again. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, it is definitely a delight to have a former senator on the program this morning to look at some of these issues concerning budget pattern. Let's begin the suspension of Senator Abdul Ninki. How justify is the suspension what are some of those offenses or some of those misconduct that you can say doesn't warrant a suspension of a sitting senator is his suspension justifiable uh, thank you for having me once again in your program you're welcome first of all the issue in controversy here is about the allegations made by senator ningi from bauchi state and that allegation borders on uh, the padding of 3.7 trillion naira, naira into the 2024 budget. Now, when allegations are made by senators or lawmakers, and when such allegations uh, touches on the integrity, the reputation of other senators, uh, naturally by actions, or by words, whatever you do that goes beyond yourself yes, sir. in the National Assembly, you will be called to question. And it is incumbent on you that made the allegation to come with 
proven fact that such things takes place. And if you can prove your fact, then you stand on a moral high ground. But if you cannot, then normally sanctions are being imposed on you. Pardon is as long as the history of the National Assembly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it is one aspect of uh, corruption which permeates life in the National Assembly uh, for decades. And the point is that it cannot be done by one person. It can either be done by a collection of senators or uh, it can be done by uh, a collaboration between the Senate or lawmakers and the executive arm of government. government. So the uh, many people don't understand what uh, suspending a senator means. Probably you if help you us su- to break it down. Yeah, if you are suspended as a senator, uh, there are sanctions that are attached to it. One is that you will not be allowed to attend the plenary. You will not be allowed to attend committee meetings. You will not be allowed to participate in the oversight function as a senator. Your office will be sealed. And you are expected not to be seen between the premises of National Assembly. Also, your salary, your allowances, your entitlement and constituency funds will all be blocked. Pending when the period of suspension is lifted. But there is a procedure that is done before a senator is suspended. The last senator that was suspended in the history of Nigerian Senate was Senator Omo Agege who was alleged to have led thugs into the National Assembly to steal the mace, of, the national, days, mace yeah. of the National Assembly, uh, of the Senate. Now, he was the, the last senator to be suspended in the National Assembly. And in that, there are steps that has to be taken before a senator is suspended or any lawmaker. Now, when the issue that he was alleged to have committed or said is brought before the general house and the chamber. Now, by vote, the Senate president will now demand the opinion or positions of senators on the matter. And the matter is referred to the ethics committee. The ethics committee, either it is one which is set up ad hoc by the Senate President or the one that is standing okay. will now invite will invite the Senator to come and answer issues and also make explanation. Mm. So he will be interrogated. And then the committee now, after that will deliberate with itself and bring report to the chamber and then actions will be taken. But in this case I have seen that uh, immediately this issue was raised. He was suspended almost immediately. He was suspended immediately. So is there a default in the procedure before he was suspended? Well, the senators, uh, if, if no senator raised any issue of, 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 of process, yeah. then it stands. Uh, it is for a, any senator to say that uh, what was done was right or was not right. But let me be very frank with you. Uh, when you are in the National Assembly, the most difficult moment is when controversial issues come to the floor and you have to take a position. There is nothing difficult of being a lawmaker when it comes to the issue of it is about getting salary and going to constituency to share money or to do constituency project. The most difficult aspect of it is taking position in terms of controversies. And controversies like this, when one that affects when the, the Senate president has an interest yeah. is you will be in between a rock and a hard place. If your senator is not with Akwabio, is, is with Ningi. And any senator that decide to remain silent on matters like this yeah. is either afraid of the public or is afraid of suspension. So during my time as a senator, 
Uh, well, I didn't go to the Senate as, as a politician. I went there as an activist. So I, I very much know all these things. And I have a constituency. I have done my own constituency. <laughs> a moral constituency from the civil society. And I took it upon myself to reveal the amount of money being paid to senators, which is the first time in the history of Nigeria. Mm. It's 1999. Because people were saying that senators are paid this, are paid that. Nobody... Uh, and, and the National Assembly lawmak- lawmakers are afraid of coming out to say, this is what I'm actually receiving. And I said it at that time. I said I was receiving 13.5 million naira for running cost. I received 750,000 naira for salary. And mm-hmm. this is what I received. So when I disclosed that, my colleagues feel offended. And many came after me that I have, have in- incited the public against them. Even a lady came who was a senator. She said... I wanted to break her home because her husband now took a newspaper clip of what I said and threw it before her. I said, so this is the money you have been collecting. He nearly sent her out of his house. So, but at the end of the day, the Senate wanted to suspend me. Mm-hmm. But Saraki now stepped in and said, uh, if we do that, we are going to incite the public against us because what he has done now, he has provide so position himself in a very in a very position which any attempt to do anything to him will be a problem to all. so he saved me from that suspicion now in the case in the case of this uh, uh, the opposition senators uh, supposed to have lined up behind Ningi but they refused so where are the PDP senators where are the Labour Party senators where are the NMPP senators because uh, if they uh, actually believe in what he said and they will line up with him Uh, but many of them now may prefer to bury their heads in the sand for the issue to go away because it has implications if you side with Ningi you may go on suspension and if you side with Opabio the public are there with their knives uh, and they will slaughter you and also because already what what Ningi has said yeah 90%, 95% 90%, 95% of the public will believe it, whether it is true or not. Because already the National Assembly is known to have uh, to, 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 to have been deep in the culture of padding, and, and, and it doesn't have a good image in, in the eyes, in of, the the eyes of the public. So, so it's difficult for the public to believe Ningi. And then any attempt by any senator to go against Ningi, he will be against the public. The public. So this is the situation of things. It's getting interesting because as a former senator, you have narrated your ordeals and how things happen during your time. With all of these, your experience with Saraki, you revealing the facts and figure of what exactly was going down as at then. Do you think there is a political undertone? The suspension of Ningi is a political undertone with your explanation and experience in the past. You see, we live in a very politically sensitive country, whatever you say or do will be interpreted in some ways. Even though President Bola Tinubu was majorly elected by people from the north, because out of his 8 million votes, yeah. 5 come from northern Nigeria. Very true. But there are feelings, uh, there are sentiments that are being whipped up against his government now the North for a number of reasons. One is the political appointment that are going on and secondly is the skewed budget mm. and so many things that are coming up now. And and the senators sees themselves, Northern senators see themselves as defenders of Northern interests. And the person who was suspended is not just a senator, he's the chairman of Northern Senators Forum. Forum. So these are some of the sentiments that are going to be whipped up. But uh, what actually happened in the National Assembly is that since the election of Okpabio, there are people who have lost that election. And in their own way, they will do everything possible to use every slight opportunity to see how they can bring him down. And uh, in politics, trying to bring somebody down, uh, it's been seen to be part of the game because you have to bring somebody down before you go up. Yeah, to the top. Yes, so bringing down is part of politics. So, so they have to do it, but the way they will go about it is is a, is a matter. So so now from from indications that we have had, 
somebody raised allegation that it was an attempt to overthrow uh, Apabio. Apabio. Well, there are people always there who are ready to to overthrow. But I think it's important that uh, that uh, you don't have you don't have a vibrant opposition there that will be able to see this and oppose this and stand by this. Uh, the people who are elected to on the platform of the position, since they went there, they simply dissolve into into something which I, you sometimes you even find out that it is even some of the APC senators that stand up to oppose the APC uh, 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 government. So, 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 so we we have we have seen these things happening, and uh, before Akwabio was elected, uh, there was. Uh, and no, there were northern senators that had their own groupings vying for um, that same position, for that position. Yeah. And, and they are still not sleeping they will uh, use any opportunity uh, to take over and, and President Tunubu is not just an honorary president but a president in the history of Nigeria who was once a senator and he knows he understands what, the game yeah he knows and understands what happens there and uh, uh, Buhari, for the fact that he doesn't understand what happens in the National Assembly, and Saraki emerged, and Dogara. Yeah. And because they emerged without the influence, I guess, I guess, or despite the, the onslaught from Buhari, now we had a four years of turbulence relationship between... The lawmakers and the executives. And the executives, yes. This is uh, a very, very interesting issue and um, we would like it to be interactive. We would like it to be very, very audience participatory. That is why I would like also to drag you into the conversation. But before we open up the phone lines, you did mention in your earlier submission that uh, budget padding has been, is, is as old as the history of um, the National Assembly itself. And it cannot be done by a single lawmaker. It's something that has to be collectively by some senators or in collaboration with some members of the executive. So do you think there is an element of um, conspiracy to bring down this government by this alleged, by this allegation from coming from the suspended senator? Do you think there is uh, an element of conspiracy to bring or, or to discredit this government? You see, when you are in the National Assembly, the National Assembly is not a department of the executive. It's not a unit. Yeah. When you're elected to be a lawmaker, you're not there to be a psychophant or a loyalist of anybody. Like a rubber stamp. You are not there to kowtow to anybody or to be, to lose your own conscience. So, and it is within the mandate and responsibility of a senator to raise issues, to criticize, and to express his opinion. Uh, that is that is what a senator or a lawmaker is supposed to to do. Uh, bringing down government is something different. I I I, I believe that in the National Assembly we shouldn't elevate criticisms to the point of saying that you are there to bring down. What what why should you bring down an elected government that is already in place? And if you bring it down, what do you put on the alternative there? So, so all the problems in National Assembly is within the same political party. Uh, though original sentiment has, mm. has come in now uh, in the sense that uh, uh, the person who is now suspended in, in the Senate uh, will be seen to be a sort of a hero. Who has blew the whistle and he is suffering yeah. the consequences. But it is incumbent on you as a senator. Whatever you see, you should back it up with facts. When I said I was given 13.5 million monthly, when the senators come after me, I, I told them frankly that I said I was the one who was giving. Yes. And if you said you are not giving one, that is <laughs> that is your own problem. <laughs> Uh, I didn't call your name, but I say I was giving, and I can stand before you and show you my phone and show the alert which I have received every month. So if you said that you, a senator from Cross River or 
UB or anywhere, you don't collect that money. Well, I didn't mention your name. So it's difficult for you to, to hold me for, for that. But if you said such monies have been parted. Yeah. But 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 it may not be up to that three point five. But someone can say we did not part three point seven million million trillion naira. But it's possible that they have parted three point six fifty. <laughs> you understand? So it depends on the way you read what he said. But there is no Senate in the history of Nigeria since 1999 that has not parted budget. The last bu- budget that was parted was $206 billion under Buhari. And shamelessly, it was attributed to typographical errors. Oh. So so the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Humanitarian Minister were back and forth against each other. And the Senate of Laon were also immersed in the controversy. And that matter simply died down. So You see, in Nigeria, if we go, don't go into nitty-gritty of things, we will never get things right. Uh, Bola Tinubu contested election. Yeah. And whether it was rigged or not, he has won. And the, mm, the Supreme Court has made pronouncement on that. And the Supreme Court has made pronouncement on that. So if you remain hammering on the fact that his government is illegitimate, Many things will be happening. You will not concentrate on going into it to tell, to, to challenge it. You see, when elections are over, now we should be talking about the country. Exactly. Criticize government, its policies, its programs should be criticized. But for you to do that, you have to know what you are criticizing. And you have to arm with the facts of what you need to do. The National Assembly is supposed to be uh, an institution a democratic institution that would hold the executive to account and perform its oversight function. And within the National Assembly itself, the opposition uh, lawmakers supposed to play the role of opposition, providing an alternative view and scrutinizing the activity. Because if you are like check and balances. Yeah, if you are from a ruling party and a lawmaker, many people, many are being have been uh, restricted by the fact that they have to support their political party and support the government. they are answerable to their party. Yeah, everything about the government, they have to support it. But but what happens to the people who are elected on the platform of opposition political parties? When people refuse to elect a ruling party uh, senatorial candidate and they elect an opposition senatorial candidate, their expectation is that he will go there and play the role of an opposition. But when you go there, you don't play the role of opposition. I said, that's why I said it. Being a lawmaker is not about coming to the National Assembly with Babariga and, and a convoy of vehicle and then uh, getting money to go back to your constituency and be sharing to people. Uh, but but you, you need to prove that you are the both. people who yes. elected you. Elected you that you, you're you are representing with, their interests. there. <clears throat> you see senators sitting down. They can't talk. They can't oppose. They can't even air their own opinion. Out of fear of... Why did you contest? What are you there to do? I, I, I don't know how to do these things here. I can give you a typical example. <clears throat> Under the Buhari administration <clears throat> for eight years... <clears throat> There were security issues we faced in Kaduna State. Schools were attacked. Bandits were unleashing terror. But do you know that lawmakers from Kaduna State were afraid of standing up in National Assembly to even speak because they have a governor they are scared of. Or they don't want to be seen to be upsetting or upsetting any somebody somewhere. If you are a coward, you should not be in the National Assembly. You don't need to. Because people shouldn't waste their time voting. For me, to, for, 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 a, for a people to vote for an opposition, a lawmaker that will go there and behave cowardly, it's better they vote for a ruling party. So at least they know that they are here and they're going to get something out of it. Yes. Well, 
These are the submissions of Senator Shehu Sani. And the program you're listening to right now is Hello Maze on Radio. It's your political talk show, which uh, bring into the limelight issues in the front burner. And uh, the burning issue at the moment is the suspension of uh, Senator Ningi for his allegation against some lawmakers. He said 3.3, 3.5 trillion naira was padded in the 2024 budget. And these monies are meant for constituency projects. Uh, this project is supposed to reflect the lives of the lives of electorates and people who voted these senators. And it is generating a lot of uh, controversies, divergent opinions. And people are looking at what could be done to salvage the situation rather than suspending the senator because the public are at the receiving end of whatever policy or whatever law that is being put in place in the country. So we will go on a short break. I will be opening up the phone lines as we would love to hear from you before we go on a short break. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think is playing out in the National Assembly and what could be done? Is there an element of truth in what the senator is alleging? These monies are not just 10 naira. They are not just 1 million or 1 billion. Trillions of naira meant for constituency project. He was alleging that the money was um, being padded for selfish gains, which is supposed to reflect some of the programs and policies of government, which is to like provide succor to the general public because of the policies of fuel subsidy removal and uh, some of the issues which we are going through in the country. So let's hear your thoughts. Let's get your feedback mechanism. Call us on the studio number. First number is 090-9752-9699. That is 090-9752-9699. Senator Shea Usani is here to answer all of your questions. And if you think that you want to make contributions, an alternative number is 0806-396-3643. Alternative number it's 0806 396 Hello and good morning. Yes, welcome to the program. Our first caller. Yes, sir. Tell us your name and your location. Yeah, this is Michael from Guagua. Michael from Guagua. Go ahead. You have a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Erodite Senator's uh, son oh. for sharing with us. He's uh, from the School of uh, Wisdom. So we always do it. Amen. Uh, I, mean, I want to ask you a question. I know oh. that uh, the National Assembly is a pillar of a democracy because in the neighboring um, uh, military, they still have judiciary and uh, executive. And uh, they only don't have uh, the, the legislature. So uh, is it not possible that uh, we scrap the executive altogether? I mean, there are some countries that are uh, even uh, getting only the camera. Thank you very much, Michael from Guagua. Uh, Senator Shewsan, he's asking if there is a possibility we can adopt a unicameral system instead of having a bicameral uh, a law, uh, national assembly that so much is expended in running governance. That is uh, the question from Michael. Um, well, thank you, Michael, for that question. Well, there is an on- ongoing debate in the House of Representatives now on the proposal for a return to a parliamentary system of government. But um, I think it is time we tell ourselves the truth as a nation that uh, this democracy is too expensive for our economy. We have structures. India is one point two hundred and fifty billion people, 
and China is 1.2 billion people. But the kind of ministries, department, agencies, and democratic structures we have is even more than the countries that are five times more than us in numbers. So, your proposal for scrapping of the Senate is not far-fetched. But what I could have want us to do is to go holistically and restructure the country, restructure our democratic process so that things will be easier for us. Um, the Senate and the House of Reps perform the same function. <laughs> and the difference is that the Senate is is mandated to confirm political appointees of Mr. President and the House of Reps don't do that. That's the only difference. But everything that is done here is uh, whether raising motion, performing oversight function, inviting government functionaries, and making laws. So that is it. That is, uh, there are 360 members of House of Reps, 109 senators. And when you put the whole thing into Nara and Kubu, yeah. you can see the billions that need to be pumped into maintaining this this is uh, legislative houses. So, pros, uh, uh, having one parliament would be a good idea for our economy. But also there's a reason why people, why the, the designers of our democracy made it that way. The Senate provides a platform for every state to be represented. To be represented. Bailsa has less than 2 million people or 3. Kano has up to 13, 14 million people. But in the Senate is equalized so that every state will be equal to every state. That is the reason for creating the Senate. But the House of Reps now is to, it, it's done in terms of numbers. The states that have more people have more representation. And then the states that have more lands also have more representation. So what you lose in the reps, you gain it in the Senate. So it's either we dissolve the reps and allow the Senate or dissolve the Senate. But there are consequences of that. If you dissolve the Senate yeah. and leave it for rep, states with the highest number of people will dominate the political activity there. Yeah. There is no way any lawmaker from Bielsa or Cross River that can counter a lawmaker, uh, 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 resolve all lawmakers from, from Kaduna and, and, and Kano. Because of the numbers, yes, which is politics. It's a game of numbers. Yeah, because if you look at it in House of Reps, there are more northerners <laughs> than, than you have people from southern part of Nigeria. So if you scrap Senate and leave it for, for, for only making House of Reps, uh, northern, northern lawmakers will simply gather and get everything done. So it's the Senate now that equalized what happens in the House of Reps. So there are implications of whatever you do. So in that aspect, you should look at it. Um, Senegal can scrap. Uh, we can have, if, if, we have, if we want to have a parliamentary system, as they are also proposing, they should know that it comes with price and consequences for that. Because if you're going to have a parliamentary system, it means that uh, whoever is going to be the head of state will not be elected by Nigerians. It is the the parla parliamentarians that will elect, elect him. Who will be Nigeria's president. And he will be answerable to the lawmakers. <laughs> yes, yeah. and you know when you leave everything to politicians. A whole lot could go down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is that aspect of it. So, so they may not need to share <clears throat> all these baguette and indomie you people used to collect during election. They may not need to share it because they know that once you win the election in your constituency, you are already well armed to select who is going to be the president of Nigeria. So take for that. And then, and secondly, in parliamentary system, you should know that they have to dissolve all the state house of assemblies and create regional parliament. There will be one regional parliament in any one in Kaduna one in Lagos, one... And even if you put it that way, the North may end up having three. Three regional, regional parliaments. parliaments. And then there's one in Abuja here. 
So if you look at what happened, and again, you look at it, the issue that I've been raised from the beginning is that parliamentary system led to the collapse of the First Republic because it, because it doesn't encourage national unity. Mm-hmm. Now, South East has, is it, five states. Uh, if you have a regional parliament there, they decide on issues of South East and other things there. But you can't compare to the number. Yeah. What have you rather said? And, and then you look at even what happens in Nigeria today. In everything, you will see the North more united than the South. Mm-hmm. When you talk of Northern Governors meeting mm-hmm. that takes place in Kaduna, it is regular, it's consistent, mm-hmm. it is purpose, purposeful for the people of the North because they have shared assets, shared history. Mm-hmm. Uh, under Sardona, there are assets that belong to Sardona, which he has said, the NNDC, hotels, mm-hmm. chains of other things have been there and they sit down and discuss about it. But when you can't talk of southern governors. If you, if southern governors meet, what are they going to discuss? Mm-hmm. You know, because the governors from southeast have different interests from the governors, governors from south south. Mm-hmm. And the governors from southwest have their own personal interest. You can't imagine all the governors in south is sitting down to agree with the governors from southwest and south south. So even in in even in the national assembly in the senate when you talk of Northern Senators Forum, it's a very powerful forum. Mm-hmm. But Southern Senators Forum cannot hold because of the differences that exist in the three geopolitical zones. Mm-hmm. You can't expect a senator. A senator from South East would not like to be seen to be himself aligned with all what the senator from South were said. But in the northern part of Nigeria, I forget about the issue of this middle belt. What they decide in Kaduna, mm-hmm. all these Governors, you will see that the governor of Benue, the governor of Plateau, that are basically agreeing with what. So, so this is what happened. So, so what? When you are taking some steps, we have to be very careful because there are implications of what what, what you are doing. Federation Nigeria as a federal republic is the best way to which we can run this country. We can decide, and who will agree? If we are going to dissolve these states now. All these people who want to be governors, they want to be this and that. Who, who among them will agree that that there should be no Anambra, Abia, Enugu, Imo states? Just step aside for one regional head. One regional head in Enugu. How many people are going to agree with that? The politicians are it, and they are also are going to vote whether it should be or it should not be. Mm. People have created their own fiefdoms and kingdoms in Nigeria. But we have to tell ourselves the f- truth. We are both a rich and a poor nation. A rich in the sense that we are resource rich. God has given us everything that he has not given the nations that are mentioned in the Quran and Bible. Saudi Arabia has no single river. River, they don't have one. But there is no one mineral without water in their tap. Saudi Arabia doesn't have the resources Nigeria has. Now, Christians look up to Israel. Israel doesn't have one over 1,000 resources that is in Nigeria. It's just sand. Mm. But see, they are not waiting for mana. They have transformed their own land into green. We are still, we, our land is green and we're waiting for mana to come from people. Even the people whose mana was sent the last time are not waiting for it again. So, God has blessed Nigeria with everything. We don't have earthquakes. We don't have monsoon. We don't have hurricanes. These are disasters that destroy other nations. If you are talking of the sugar cane in Cuba, it can be cultivated in Nigeria. If you are talking of cotton in Pakistan and Egypt, it can be cultivated in Nigeria. If you are talking of wheat that is in Ukraine, it can be cultivated in Nigeria. If you are talking of corn that will grow in California, it can grow in Nigeria. Nigeria has 200, more than 200 rivers. Go along the river banks and see. Nobody is farming anything. If you want, if you're going to go into Kaduna from Abuja, take the rail line. By the time you reach the river, river Kaduna, mm-hmm. you will see the river is there, but on the side of the river there is no farm. So, what do you want God to do for you? To send elders to take over your Ministry of Agriculture and do farming for you to eat? So, this country is well blessed. 
What we lack is visionary leaders over the years. Leaders come into power to serve themselves, to serve their ethnic group, to amass wealth and enrich their family, and then die in US and UK, and they bring their body here, and then we all line up to weep for them. So, so this is the way this country is run. If we don't have any nation you see in the world that has attained the position of greatness, it's been led by a visionary leader. Leader who will sacrifice his today for tomorrow. All this suffering, people are complaining. All these things are no food, everything is expensive. I'm telling you, if you have leaders who have demonstrated that they are also prepared to suffer, they cut down the cost of governors. You see no vehicles. The amount of food they eat is very limited. There is a prudent life in the, in the life of people who are leading. When you see your leader making sacrifices on making, making sacrifices, the whole nation will say, let's go that way, if that is the way to go to the promised land. But if you have a set of leaders who, whose family are living in luxury, who who, who are who are fisting on the resources of the state, like the way vultures do on cargas. And then you ask yourself, why should it, be, should it only be the poor that is going to make sacrifices? And nobody is going to be ready for it. The economy reform programs of of uh, President Bolatino are very good. Are good, but the point is, what are the economic reform programs that lead us to where we are today? The last government destroyed this nation. They borrowed money left, right, and center according to Nigerian Palace, or oh, east to west, north and south, to the point of 77 trillion. They turned the central bank into an ATM machine where Cabal can just put in their card and draw money. 593 accounts were opened. Many things was done. You have a president who will always be here, I assure you. I assure you, everyone, I assure you. He kept assuring a nation, and the nation kept sinking. Now, we are at a point of where we are today. In Kaduna, about 100, uh, about 200, over 200 people were kidnapped. If we did what we need to do eight years ago, we couldn't have been facing the problem we are facing today. So, the point is, there are two issues that, that led us to where we are today. Removal of subsidy and removal of subsidy on the Naira. The Naira has lost value. 1,600, and then uh, removal of subsidy has the... So you can imagine if this was done in 2015, there could not... When there was oil boom. If it was done in 2015, we couldn't have been where we are today. And I know very well that if Buhari had removed subsidy, he couldn't have faced the opposition to the way he's facing today. Because he came with, with fanatical supporters from northern Nigeria. Across that party lines. That they fight him and see him as a god. And somebody who has who's a magician that has problem of some problem of all the country. Yeah. It's even a taboo. It's even a blasphemy to criticize Buhari in northern Nigeria. Anything he wants to do, he gets it done. If it was done 20, 2016, we will have had okay. But it wasn't done. This is a fact of the matter. Should we continue to subsidize the, uh, petroleum products? That's the question. Yes, everyone wants to subsidize petroleum. Then where will the money come in? Because if you say yes, you should say where the money should come, come, come to. Because if you are going to subsidize something, say where the money is going to come in. Okay, the money should come from, okay. If we keep packing money to subsidize, and when the money is gone, we now have to borrow. Now, if you borrow from Musa to eat, borrow from Amlai to eat, borrow from James, borrow from Ngozi, borrow from Jennifer to eat, there will be a time which everyone you are borrowing will know that you are a borrower, and nobody is going to borrow your money. So, it, it, so you make provisions for circumstances, but not. We entered into a storm just like that, and since then we have been in it. Well, <laughs> there is a whole lot uh, to discuss and a whole lot to address, uh, but we are not deviating here now because um, the topic of discussion this morning on the program Hello Me is budget padding and suspension of um, Senator Ninki. And the phone lines are still open. We have less than 10 minutes to wrap up the show. You can still call and make contributions from the submissions of Senator Sheo Sani 
who has been uh, magnanimous with all of his experience and all of the questions that we are throwing at him. You can ask him questions and you can as well make your own submission. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, welcome to the program. It's Hello Maze on Armed Forces Radio. Good morning. Okay, uh, my name is Yakubu. I'm calling from Kubwa. Yakubu from Kubwa. Yes. Go ahead. You have a question for the senator? All right. You see, uh, the problem with Nigeria is that any issue that happens now, people will not have a message. That is just it. Everybody, when you see the two people, they just have a message. That is what you want to say. That is what you want to say. We need the Senate and Corrupt. We always know that one. But mm-hmm. know that everything that happens that is Senate and Corrupt, mm-hmm. they are done wrong. Because uh, this is a one that we say, sure. To be a Niki at the end of the day. So the people are not looking at what area that the man was going, which is always giving us problems in this country. We we the masses. He said the budget. Let people are just focusing attention on the party, party, party. He said the budget was just against the north. It was skewed against the north. This is the problem we are always having. The police with great problems to work for all the masses. We will be fighting ourselves. How it was true against against the North, nobody is asking that question. We are not doing this. The same thing is a fraud. We are fraudulent. This and that. People just make that they are mad. Because people are not listening to it. When I listen to it, I said, I thought that the man was not, he could not even do the salvation. So in the area of uh, parliamentary system of government, yes. We in Nigeria here, parliamentary system of government does not divorce. Because it's not the case. Because I saw it in the last, I saw it state where the governor will be pulling that people out of the state 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 of the for of the state 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 of the president is who does not get the requirement to, to be in power. Mm. It will not mad. Because we don't, we don't uh, follow the rules, we need that for our people to follow. We need that we have, we have a big crisis. But what we have is an advocate. Let's grab out of rent. There's no need for it. Because I listen to Shin, uh, Senator Shin, he said that. The only difference between it, which is uh, the out of rent is not doing with the screen of the how about representation of every region of every state how about representation of every state is that not a okay thank you very much for being part of the program uh, let's see if we can still accommodate one more and that should be our last caller before we begin to wrap up the program uh, hello good morning Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. You are live on radio. I'm Forces Radio. The program is Hello Maze. Yeah, my senator, Nadia Shaker. <laughs> Go ahead. This is Monday from Lukogoma. Monday from Lukogoma. Thank you for being part of the program. You have a question for the senator? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I want my senator. I never knew that senator used to suspect on a serious matter. Yes. Because I don't think he's hearing it for the first time. Okay. That means that the senator has power to also remove the colleague in the house because we are just discussing that if they are going to suspend him for three months, does that mean they have the authority to also remove him in the office? Because I know he's elected. And secondly, again, the issue of this party, I just want you to explain a little for us because this thing has not been happening for the first time. It's not the second time. And for the Senator Niki to come out and explain this thing to Nigerians, honestly, we need more explanation of this issue of project parking. That English, I don't understand. I don't know what it means. Uh. All right, yes. uh, Monday from Lukogoma. Thank you. You have made your point. And if you follow the program from the initial stage, from the early stage of fr- that is from the hour of um, ten o'clock, we started the program at the uh, top of the hour, which is ten o'clock. Uh, the senator took his time to take us down memory lane, the history of padding, which has been existing right from time immemorial. So we also 
I like to allow the senator to give us his own experience when he was about to be suspended. How then the Senate President Bukola Saraki intervened? Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, welcome to the program. How is everything, sir? Everything is well. Go ahead. You have a question or a contribution quickly. Yeah, this is the Monday, Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay, I think, um, Senator, you heard him before I. Uh, bring my last question. He was telling us about, he was uh, making a case that he is in support of uh, what we discussed earlier for us to have, uh, uh, that is what um, one of the callers said, for us to have a, a bicamera instead of having a unicamera, to have, for us to have a unicamera system of uh, lawmaking instead of having a bicamera um, process that will have both the red chamber and the green chamber. He's also calling you out to make clarification the issue of do they have the power after suspending him of removing him into office probably that should be in line with my last question because time will not allow us what do the court say do the senator ningi have a way of redressing this issue in the court because uh, he's suspended for three months and this caller is asking do they also have the power to remove their colleague from office well, I will quickly answer this question. The first question about whether they have powers or not. Yes, the National Assembly has an internal rule of code of conduct for elected representatives, mm -hmm. as senators and House of Reps. And this is a rule that keeps the chamber in order. And that is why you have a Senate president, deputy Senate president, principal officers, and that's also how you have uh, the sitting arrangement in National Assembly. So in every organization, there must be a set of rules. So they have set of rules. And one of the rules there is that if you violate the rules, you will be suspended. Yeah. But a senator can go to court. That's what Omo Agige did. <laughs> the court can determine whether to restore him back or not. Um, Ningi has three options. One is to go to court. And second is to serve out his suspension and come back. And the third is for him to write an apology. So it's left for him to decide what to do. The next one is about this scrapping or no scrapping. Well, the fact is the choice before Nigerians on what they want to do. But I told you already the difference between the reps and the Senate and the implication of scrapping one of them. Mm -hmm. And there is a question which you, which someone asked which I'm more interested in, which I have, what many people Nigerians don't know. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria have been hearing padding, padding, padding. They don't know what padding, padding is. is. Padding happens in two ways. The first is inflating figures, and the second is inserting project. Okay. I hope I'm going to speak like a teacher now. What is inflating figures? Inflating figures means a minister says he wants to construct a road 200 kilometer rules for 200 million naira. Mm. And he came to the Senate to defend his project. By the time he finished with the Senate, when he goes back, the Senate will add another 100 million to his project and say, what you what you wrote there is too small. Yeah. And that is, you don't want it, will add more so that you bring the 100 to us here. <laughs> that is... Uh, I hope that answers all of the no, questions. No, yeah. And the insertion is that like say, Minister of Health will come and say he wants to build five hospitals. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then he goes to come to National Assembly to defend his project. And by the time he goes back to his office, when the document is out, he will see that they have added another five. Five extra. Which he was not the one who added to it. So that is insertion. Now, um, the one which Ningi is saying here... Was a legend. Was a legend. Uh, I... I could have, if he was given, if I have seen the documents which he have written, it could be one of the two. Okay. One, one is that it is either the document, it, either it was inflation or insertion that led to that 3.7 million. 3.7 billion, uh, trillion. Trillion uh, naira. Yes. Well, that is the size of the package. But before we go, let me ask this final question. It seems the issue is uh, about sharing of national cake because we saw Senators Jaribe alleging that some senators got as high as 500 million naira each. What's your take on this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is what they call allocation of constituency project. And they, are, they share the money into geopolitical zones. Mm. 
For example, they say every zone shall collect five, five billion. So zones that have more senators will have less money because it's like 10 people sharing what and another zone will be exactly. five people. You get it? It's like the few had the merrier. The few had the <laughs> Southeast states now. But the mystery behind this thing is that Central Abaribe said what he got was 200 and something million and not up to 500 million. So there's a conflicting figures uh, so, based on the region uh, uh, yes. and the number of. So it means that even Southeast is a bit short change in, in that budget. But it is, the reason is that by law, all senators are equal. But in the chamber, they are not equal. There are things that happen in the National Assembly which other senators even don't know. No, no. Wow. If you are a layman, you, you watch the sitting arrangement of senators. The ones in the front are the mafia. <laughs> and the ones living in the business class. And the ones behind in the economy class. <laughs> okay, we've <laughs> hit top of the hour. <laughs> Do the case in here. Yeah. The eyes of it. Our journey has been steady from the advent. With crystal clear vision, we started off as a news online portal. We subsubsequently evolved into a magazine. And now, on, on your, your radio, radio, we do not only bear the name Media House. We practice with the best ethos of our professional calling, presenting facts with objectivity. We are committed and resolute. We are Harlow Maze. Harlow Maze. We are we the standard, are the standard bearers. bearers. It's Harlow Maze on radio. Dedicated to promotion of legislature, democracy, and good governance. It's hot, interactive, educating, engaging, and entertaining. Hello Maison Radio, Thursdays, 10 a.m. on Armed Forces Radio, 107.7 FM. Hello Maison Radio, Parliament, brought to the people. Brought to the people. 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 To the people.